This high power rocket is older than I am, but I built it, so let me explain that. My name is Brayden, thank you for tuning into Rocket Vlogs. As you can see around here, we like rockets. And in particular, I have an affliction for old, discontinued, or just otherwise kind of hard to get rocket kits, like a lot of the ones I have, that we're gonna go over in this video. But I figured we would start here. Now, if you're a regular watcher of my channel, you might already be familiar with this rocket, but I do have a rocket in here that you haven't been introduced to yet, and one that I'm very, very excited about. So, we're going to get to that in a second, but first, let me start here. This is a Binder Design XL, and this kit is still in production. You can get it from Binder Design. This kit popped up on eBay probably about 10 years ago, and I purchased it because it was only like $40, and it was a ridiculously good deal. When I got it, of course, knowing it was old, there's no reason to keep old rocket kits in a box and not build them. They were made to be built, so I put this thing together, and uh, I was hoping for a way to date it, and fortunately for me, there was a way. When I opened it, uh, it was wrapped in newspaper, so I looked at the date on the newspaper, and I believe it said March 1993. I know for sure the year is correct, I don't know if the month is. But yeah, I was born in 1995, this kit was made uh, at least in 1993. So, interesting fact about this thing, you can see it sustained some damage on its last flight, but this decal, this chrome ring, and Rocky people are about to cringe, but this nylon shock cord is all original from 1993 as well the only thing i changed was i added some rivets in case i ever feel like putting electronics in it and some shear pins in case i ever feel like flying it dual deploy so far i think it's only flown on an h100 and an i-180 but it is cool just to have this old little rocket before i get to the next rocket i just want to let you guys know that taylor from the anti-gravity group you know the group of us that built the 12 inch diameter rocket is 16 feet tall weighed about 200 pounds if you're new here and you want to know about that the video is in the top right but please you know wait it out watch this one first taylor started his own rocketry channel called the rocket channel and he is giving away a lock precision rocket kit at a thousand subscribers so please go click the link in the description or you can also click in the eye in the top right corner and you can find his channel go subscribe and check out his videos he just did a video documenting the build of turning one of those little wet floor signs shaped like a banana into a rocket and uh well, you'll have to click on the video to see how the flight went. All right, let's move on. I've got a couple other rocks to show you, and then the last one that I want to show you guys that you haven't seen yet, even if you're a familiar viewer of my channel, is this red one right here. But first, we're going to talk about The Lock Precision 7.5 inch Saturn V. Now this is a really cool rocket. I love the Saturn V as most rocket people do. It's the rocket that put man on the moon. This was a limited production kit made in 2019 for the 50th anniversary of the moon landing and Lock Precision only made a select few of them and teamed up with a couple people to bring fiberglass parts and some crazy custom design work. And it's an, a beautiful kit that I have not done great justice to because I just started building it last year and then it sat for almost another year before I worked on it and now it is sitting once again. It will get finished eventually. I don't know how many of them got made but I did get told by Lock Precision that they will never make them again because it was apparently a bit of a pain. So I'm sorry if you missed the boat on that. It was an amazing opportunity from the second they announced that they were going to be making them. I sent Dave Barber an email from Lock Precision and said if there's a list, put me on it, and uh, it was a little expensive, but it was something that uh, I felt obligated to purchase, and then you also got this pretty neat poster with it that I kind of want to get a frame for. It's a nice takeoff shot of a real Saturn V, the Lock Precision logo in the corner. And that is the Lock Precision Saturn V. Next up is this guy right here. This is a six inch diameter Dare Red Max Upscale by Ken Allen Performance Hobbies. And from what I understand, these may or may not still be available, but they are difficult to get a hold of. So if you're interested, I would suggest sending Ken an email, ask if he has them available. The nose cone is a bit of a problem child to get a hold of. Uh, it didn't come dual deploy standard, but I cut a one inch band here so I can put electronics in here and use the nose cone for the main parachute. And uh, yeah, I got the decals from Mark at stickershock23.com and they are awesome. This is one of my favorite SE's kits of all time. So to have a six inch one is pretty awesome and I also have a four inch one. So uh, yeah, oh yeah, I have a 2.6 inch one as well that I haven't built yet. But 
This thing is awesome. I've got a motor for it. It's almost done, so it's almost time to fly it, which is fantastic. Here's another Ken Allen upscale. I believe this rocket on his website is called Chubsy, not the Fat Boy, but it is uh, very clearly inspired by the Estes Fat Boy. And again, awesome decals from MarcusDickenshock23.com. And again, if you want one, I would email Ken and see if they're available because it's not really clear on the website whether or not they are, but it is just an awesome stubby seven and a half inch rocket. It's going to eat eye motors. And I, for the sake of scale, put a huge fake launch lug on it, but it is half an inch so I technically could fly it off a rod if I felt like it. We're gonna put some rail buttons on it because rod launches are a little freaky. Moving on, this is just the nose cone for project that I have been working on pretty recently. This is a smoking rocket seven and a half inch Honest John and again a kit from Ken Allen over at Performance Hobbies and one of my YouTube subscribers actually just recently commented that he contacted Ken and he had one of these kits available, which is absolutely crazy because I didn't realize that he still might have these nose cones, the piece de resistance, the identifiable marker of the Honest John, the bulbous nose cone is a pretty hard component to get a hold of again because of supplier issues and the fact that he still might have a couple left is pretty crazy. So evidently at least one more is sold. So if you want one, I would get in contact with him soon and see if it's available. I bought this one secondhand from somebody on the rocketry forum and it's a pre-fiberglass version, which is awesome. We're flying it this spring on an M and four J motors. It should be pretty cool. The rest of the rocket's sitting just off screen here. And it's about 10 feet tall when it's all assembled. And, but surprisingly light, it's supposed to only weigh about 35 pounds altogether. So it's going to scoot on that motor combination. Now, like I said, the final rocket that I wanted to show you guys, the one that I was really intending to make this video about is this one right here. And uh, I'm gonna switch camera locations here and set this thing out on the table so you can get a full look at it. Alrighty, here it is folks. Owning a kit from this manufacturer has been on my bucket list for a long time long time since before I even actually flew a high power rocket when I was just a sixth grader trying desperately how to figure out how I can get into this hobby and this company Dynacom was one of the first providers of fiberglass kits in the rocketry community this company and another company called Hawk Mountain and back then fiberglass components were prohibitively expensive this was a very very pricey kit I can't remember the original price but I want to say it was about $800 in 2002 when this one was purchased. Um, I'm going to have to double check on that because I have, crazy enough, the original purchase receipt and a bunch of other documentation about this thing. I purchased this rocket from the guy who built it and used it for his level 3 certification in 2002 last year when I was in California. And what's interesting about that especially is he gave me all the documentation covering the bill for his level 3 so I can see how well this thing was built and I'm pretty confident in it because it has very good internal fillets and very good external fillets and it's all just very well thought out and done. But on top of that, the fit and finish is absolutely remarkable. These fillets that run down the boat tail, very meticulously done and thought out. And the best part of all for me, if you're familiar with my channel, you'll know I'm a pretty big Gates Brothers fan because when I was growing up, that's who was doing it the best. Nobody was doing stuff quite as crazy as the Gates Brothers and a few others back then. And the guy I got this from was from California. That's where the Gates Brothers were from as well. And he was a big fan of the paint jobs on their rockets. So this rocket has a professional paint job from an auto body shop in Huntington Beach, California with the accompanying shadowed flames, just like a lot of the Gates Brothers rockets had. And on top of all that, this rocket came with the original electronics this guy used for his level three certification way back in 2002. It's an original Missile Works RRC2 board stamp 1999 with the onboard 9 volt battery. Yes, that's right. I know a lot of modern people don't like the 9 volts. So you didn't really have a choice with that altimeter because a 9 volt battery holder was built in. In addition, it came with a G-Wiz LCD 800, which I plan on flying once. My friend John Clifton collects those altimeters, so probably after it's flown, I'll send that altimeter his way. I do like my modern altimeters, I just like my old school batteries, but I do love the concept of flying this thing on its original altimeters. I just need to set up some mock delay situations, and if you don't know what a mock delay is, welcome to rocketry prior to like 2010 or something like that. Um, 
But we're gonna get it all figured out. My plan is to fly this thing at Rockstock in April in California at its home field in Lucerne on an Aerotech M2050 propellant X motor, which I have sitting over there. And uh, it might have a friend going with it, at least that's currently the plan. But yeah, this thing is awesome. The guy who sold it to me was awesome. He gave me all of the literature and a bunch of other stuff. And he showed me his uh, other prized possession rocket. But here it is, the Dynacom Anaconda. I can't tell you how excited I was when I picked this thing up. And for it to come with a professional paint job and just be really well built and look super, super nice, I couldn't have been more excited about it. Thank you so much for tuning in. I want to especially thank my Patreon supporters. You can see their names sliding across the screen right now. For as little as $1 a month, I do extra videos and behind the scenes content that you can check out there, patreon.com slash rocket vlogs. If you're new here, join the quest. We're on a mission to hit 50,000 subscribers by the end of the year. That is kind of the goal. And we've got a lot of awesome high power rocket projects coming up. It's winter, it's building time, and we have a lot of stuff to build. And this spring, I have more motors than I can even remember. So we are going to fly some rockets. I will be traveling to some more big launches, including LDRS and most likely Balls this year. If you're familiar with rocketry, you'll know that Balls is the place to be if you wanna see big, crazy, fast, and high altitude projects. We're talking Q and R motors, two stage flights to over 300,000 feet. It's going to be a good time. So please hit the subscribe button, leave me a like. You're seeing this on Sunday, that means the coming week is the week before Christmas. And I'm going to try, try, try to post a video or do a live stream every single day through Christmas Eve. And then we're going to kick 2023 off right with me and Shane going down to Kansas City for Taylor's house to have ourselves a nice New Year's party, another cool fireworks display. And we're gonna reveal the next big anti-gravity group project which will be flying at Airfest in 2023. And that's pretty much all I've got to say, so thank you once again. My name is Braden, this is Rocket Vlogs, and I'll see you guys in the next video.